Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that you've seen me review a good number of things from now actually. But this beer in particular was one that I thought would be really interesting from these guys. For this review then, we are going to head up to Stockholm once again and we're trying another new beer from Omnipoil. This one is the Tetragamatron, which comes in at 7.3% ABV and it is a New England IPA with uh, Citra, Mosaic and Galaxy. Now the main reason that this beer caught my eye is it's, it's, a, it's a little bit complicated because you know obviously Omnipoil are known as being a big imperial stout brewery they add all these different flavour essences to their beers and stuff like that but when they do beers that are kind of more purist brewing if you like like Nebuchadnezzar or Fata Morgana for example they always turn out really quite nicely and you know this was the main reason that I picked this one a couple of the other beers that have come out from Omnipoil recently have been you know sour beers and stuff like this but this is one that I saw was a very straight up new England IPA and that was what really made me very very curious about this one so hopefully it's another good beer they always tend to have good efforts when they go back to more kind of purist brewing if you like and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. This one was released on the 18th of October 2019 through the Small Partiers, or as it's now known in Seistenbolag at the Tail Red League Assortiment. So, yeah, curious to see how this one turns out. So, anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Omnipoil before. No doubt it will add some more in the fairly the near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture or whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlists of beers from different countries there is one there for all the swedish beers that i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about omnipoil then on to my brewery notes once again so Omnipoil were founded back in 2011 by Henrik Fenty, who's a long-time home brewer, and Carl Grandin, who is a clothing designer. But the two met one day and they were discussing just how insular the craft beer scene was in Sweden at the time and further afield. But they decided that they wanted to start a brewery together on the basis of that to kind of reinvigorate the beer scene from both like a stylistic perspective and also from a gastronomic sense as well. So they felt that this partnership between a home brewer and uh, a designer was really quite logical. The name for the brewery itself is derived from omnipotent chicken, so omnipoil, poil of course being the, the Spanish word for chicken, and these guys are gypsy brewers, so they've got no brewery of their own, and rather they use the spare capacity at other breweries, and uh, you know, as a result of that, they brew many different collaborations. Um, a number of their beers are brewed at Dugas Bregory in Gothenburg, that's where they brew a lot of their imperial stouts. They brew their uh, bigger volume beers at the De Prof Brewery in La Piste Hefte near Ghent in Belgium and there's a few other breweries doing various things for them as well actually. I'm not sure exactly what the the complete makeup of their uh, of their brewing is at the moment where exactly everything is brewed. Um, but they also have their Omnipoil's hat in Stockholm as well which is a collaboration with Pizza Hat. This has become quite popular and it's definitely worth a visit. Hopefully I can film an out and about video for you there at some point in the in the fairly near future but they've got really nice pizzas there and you'll find some Omnipoil beers that you wouldn't necessarily find through say Stembolaget and um, in 2019 they also opened up another bar in Hamburg in Germany as well actually so hopefully I can get down and visit that at some point. I never really need an excuse to go to Germany. I'm always very keen for trips down there. So if there's an Omnipoil bar down there, I'm sure I can manage to uh, to check that out the next time I'm in Hamburg. But then again, there are some really very good breweries in Hamburg that are local German ones too. Um, but a really interesting brewery, this one. Like I said, they're known for adding flavour essences and stuff to their beers to give you these big cakey imperial stouts. They're quite a prolific brewery as well. And according to Untapped, they've produced over 250 different beers as of October 2019 when I'm filming this review for you. So yeah, I think it's fair to say that these guys are one of the better known Swedish craft breweries and they're very good when it comes to both the kind of pure style of brewing in my experience. As I was mentioning earlier, Fata Morgana and Nebuchadnezzar. The Leon is also a very nice Belgian style IPA. They're very good when it comes to those. Their Imperial Stouts, the big cakey flavour essence ones are also very good. Um, so yeah, and I think their sour beers are getting some good reputation, are getting some good 
um, recommendations these days as well. So, you know, pick a style of beer that you enjoy from Omni Poyle, and I'm sure that you will uh, really quite enjoy it, actually. It's a brewery that I always enjoy reviewing stuff from, but this particular beer was one that really piqued my interest. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Omni Poyle for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages if you're interested in all the different beers that they've done. And I would recommend that you go and check out Omni Poyle's hat if you find yourself in uh, up in Stockholm. So, yeah. Okay, so let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So, as is always the case, Carl Grandin has pulled out a very nice piece of artwork for this. You know, there's a lot of Hebrew and stuff on here. I'm not sure if this is meant to be. Um, I tried, like, Googling the name Tetragamatron and things like that. And Gamatron. I'm not sure if it's. Um, there's a lot of like religious symbolism and stuff on here. You can see the Hebrew and stuff like that. Whenever I see Hebrew, I always remember the um, the woman on uh, the internet who was claiming that monster. It was it was saying six 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 with a monster symbol on it. I always remember that video. That's the one thing because it's quite similar actually to these little Hebrew digits that are up here. But um, yeah, really nice artwork on this one. Um, symbols from lots of different things. It's kind of like a face as well. You can see like the, the eyes there, the nose, and then the smile actually, but then there's Hebrew. And it's almost like a kind of extended... I would have said that's a Star of David, but it's only got five points rather than six, and I'm sure the Star of David is, uh, is six points. So, yeah, but you can see there is a Star of David in this little thing here. So a lot of religious kind of symbolism in this one, but quite nice artwork, I have to say. And there you can see on the side there is Omnipoil. Tetra Gamatron. So yeah, a New England IPA coming in at 7.3% ABV, Galaxy, Citra and Mosaic. So yeah, not much else to say about the artwork on this one. Really nice as you kind of always get from Omnipoil. 440 milliliter can, or 44 centiliters as the Swedes like to say. So let's get it out and get on with the tasting then. I'm really curious to see how this turns out. A little bit of excitement as we open it up. But yeah, we'll get it out and into the glass. You can smell some of these lovely hops actually, just as you open this one up. The head, I'm sure, will calm down in a little bit, but we'll take it easy. Maybe this was when I was walking back from say Stembolaga earlier that the beer got a little bit excited actually. It's a bit annoying that it does that when it does that, but yeah, we can look at the colour and stuff just now and let the beer calm down a little bit, that will that head will go down very, very quickly. So as you can see with this beer, if I hold it up to the light, it's poured a lovely kind of pale um, yellow colour, this one, almost like pineapple juice or mango juice or something along those lines, you know, very, you know, pretty much exactly what you would expect from a New England IPA these days. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of the head there, and you can see the head that came out of this one was... Um, absolutely massive. You know, it was a, it was basically a big, bumpy, kind of creamy coloured head. This one. So yeah, let's put a little bit more in the glass and see how we got on. But in terms of, um, in terms of the appearance, this beer is not really doing anything particularly surprising. I really wonder what's going on with this actually because the head, yeah, the head's proven to be a little bit troublesome in this one. We might need to pause the video and uh, and just let it settle down a little bit. Well, I'm sure we can take a look at the aroma and then have a taste of it anyway. But um, yeah, nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. Uh, do let me know in the comment section below if you guys had this issue with the, the head and pouring this one as well, actually. But let's take a look at that aroma then and just see how we get on. Oh yeah, so straight away with this beer, I've got a feeling that this one might be very, I think this is going to be a really nice, quite smooth, creamy um, New England IPA. Um, so you can pick up some nice, kind of smooth, lactosey notes in this one, a little bit of a wheaty quality. Also, um, just a little touch of a biscuity sweetness as well, but lots, lots of nice, wheaty white bread in there. Quite a, an oaky, uh, not oaky, oaty quality to this one. And uh, I think there might be a little bit of lactose in here as well, actually. You can really smell that lovely kind of creaminess. There's also a bit of a sweet, a little bit of a sweet biscuity malt in there, but I really think this beer is leaning towards the, um, you know, the sort of creamy, white bready, wheaty sort of things actually. So it really does smell like a very good kind of purist effort when it comes to these New England IPAs actually. On the green side of the hops, 
pardon me, this one comes across as being really quite floral actually, but I think that's probably down to the the freshness of this beer. It says on the side here, in fact, no, that's a that's a batch number rather than a. I thought that was a date there, but yeah. Um, but in terms of the um, the actual the green side of the hops there, this one really comes across as being very floral. There's a good little bit of a floral aromaticity to this beer. Um, and it's quite pungent actually. I mean, I do wonder if um, they've used another hop in here as, for example, the bittering hop rather than um, it just being Citra Galaxy and Mosaic. And of course, those are hops that we are quite familiar with. There is a little bit of grassiness in there. You can pick up a little bit of earthiness, which will be from the Mosaic. Um, Citra, of course, is usually quite juicy and mango-like, um, and it's got a few complexities to it as well. Galaxy is quite a pungent passion fruit, I mean, especially if you compare it to Simcoe. Simcoe's a more juicy, milky-type passion fruit, and you can get some pineapple and stuff from that as well. And Mosaic is quite a tangerine orangey-type hop, in fairness, generally, but it can have a few things like blueberries and pineapples in its complexities as well. But, um, yeah, in terms of the fruitiness, then, Definitely picking up some nice pineapple notes out of this one. That's the first thing that comes to mind. A little bit, you can pick up the mosaic. The mosaic's the first thing that jumps out of this at me. The galaxy, the pungency of that passion fruit, it is there, but it's taken a little bit of a back seat, I think, compared to the other things. The mangoes are there. The pineapples are there. They're sort of making the beer feel as if it's a little bit more sort of juicy, but you've got a lovely kind of... Um, You've definitely got a nice sort of juicy tangerine orange quality to this beer as well. So um, the fruitiness in this beer is really nice too. I mean, in terms of the fruit as well, you can pick up a little bit of a, a gooseberry note. There's a bit of a... Um, you can pick up a little bit of lychee. And for me, there was also a little bit of the kind of blueberry complexity that um, you can sometimes get out of mosaic as well, to be honest with you. So... That's really interesting. What I would say is that at this stage, I'm drinking this beer. I went out to uh, to get this in the morning and put it in the fridge at work and then took it home. Um, so, I mean, it is in a very good um, state at the moment. It will be pretty damn fresh, actually, and that's probably the reason that some of these nice floral aromatic notes are quite so pungent in it. One of the things I've always felt with the New England IPAs is that you need to, sometimes with them, you need to let the, the green side of the hops just die back a little bit, maybe leave it a week, sometimes 10 days, maybe even two weeks, something like that. Um, so I think this one might be really just in the very, very fresh stages, but we'll see how we get on, actually. But um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. As I always say, take a bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of um, of the of the beer before you get stuck in. This one's a really creamy smelling IPA, but it does have some lovely fruity characteristics and a big floral aromaticity to it as well. But this one is the Tetra Gamatron, a New England IPA coming in at 7.3% with Citra, Galaxy and Mosaic from Omnipoyo, a gypsy brewer based here in or based in Stockholm here in Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, skull. Yeah, that's a really, really nice example of the, the New England IPA style. Thumbs up to um, to Omnipoyo for this one. Um, I think it's fair to say that if you like um, Fata Morgana, you probably are going to enjoy this one. I don't find this one as creamy as Fata Morgana right enough. This one's a little bit more light and drinkable. Um, I can't remember what percentage Fata Morgana is. I want to say that it was around 8% or something because, um, you know, um, Nebuchadnezzar was a lovely, um, that one was a big West Coast IPA, a double IPA. And that's still, I, that for me, that's still one of the best Omnipoyo beers that I've had along with Fata Morgana. But this beer is a little bit more like a kind of drinkable, um, if you like. It's a, it's a little bit of a less kind of thick um, New England IPA this but it's lovely in terms of its flavour and this is what I was saying earlier Omnipoil when they have a go at doing some of the more purest brewing they always get some really really good results actually I was very impressed I forget what it was called was it the Lucy they had a, a Pilsner beer that they did recently or a Hellas Lager that was really very good actually I forget who that was a collaboration with but that was very nice I'd love to see these guys having a go at like Doppelbox and Scotch Ales and stuff like this but mainly you know they are uh, an IPA, a sour beer, an imperial stout brewery they don't tend to have a go 
at so many different styles, but I think that would be very interesting for them is to do like, you know, a Doomkull, a Scotchiel, a Quadrupel, a Tripel, something like that. That would be very interesting to see how Omnipoil would do these beers. But yeah, I really like how this, this goes together. If you get the chance to try this one, definitely have a go at it. I mean, um, when I think about this beer, you know, if I compare it to other New England IPAs, this is quite similar to what you would get in Gothenburg from the likes of Stiegberriots or OO or something like that. Um, it does have its own kind of slant though. I'm finding that this one, it feels a little bit dusty. I'm pretty sure this beer has been dry hopped quite a little bit actually um, but it certainly sort of hits the spot actually I mean they've done it they've done a nice job of this and when it's on the poil you know you don't really expect anything less from them I really wonder what's going on with the the if this beer's been agitated when it's been transported or whatever but um, this is a very nice example of a New England IPA, so thumbs up and hats off or whatever to Omnipoil for this beer. So, um, yeah, let's try and break the flavour of this one down a little bit then. Yeah, so, middle of your palate then, you can feel that nice pale malty quality, that just blankets the middle of your tongue. The further that you go into the aftertaste, you can feel that's going to evolve a little bit into a, like a smoother sort of wheaty white bready quality, which is really nice. Um, the further you go into the aftertaste as well, more in the centre of your palate, you're going to feel a little bit of the oaty creaminess coming out of the beer. And then in the very, very centre of your tongue, there is a little bit of a slightly more biscuity sweetness pushes its way out of the beer and that'll be where the alcohol is being covered up with this one. I mean it's 7.3%. This is not a beer that is, um, you know, it's not going to blow your head off in terms of its alcohol content and things like that. The malt base is kind of pretty much what you would expect with this one. It's actually quite similar to a lot of the West Coast Swedish IPAs that I've had from the likes of Spike, OO, Steak variants and things like that. So that's an interesting point to make about this one because I really do wonder if the West Coast uh, Swedish IPAs could be a bit of a, a sub style, to be honest, um, because they're a lot lighter and less kind of thick than you would get from, say, the American takes on on the the New England style, if you like. Although they are very closely related, that's another interesting point for another video. But this beer is is kind of like a sort of Gothenburg IPA if that makes sense. I think that's pro it's probably fair to assess it as that but in a general New England sense it's very very solid as well don't get me wrong on that. So yeah really nice malt base this one and I would say the malt base is well balanced actually I mean it's a little bit it does have a little bit of a slightly lactosey sweetness to it, like a that sort of candied milkshake sugar. You can really feel that in the middle of your palate too. But otherwise, it's like a very sort of straight up, more malty um, New England IPA. There is a bit of an oaty quality to it, but overall, it's a little bit more. It's quite smooth, but at the same time, it's a little bit lactosey and sweet. And you do have a little element of that creaminess in the middle of your palate too. But again, like I was saying you really can tell that this beer is very, very fresh. You've got a good bit of that kind of green hoppy quality in there, which gives the impression of some quite, um, you know, a big hoppy bitterness to this beer. And I've noticed that, that the New England IPAs are starting to creep up um, a little bit in terms of their IBU count. Normally it's always about 30, but I think we're, um, you know, we're looking at maybe around 40 or 50 IBUs with this beer. We'll talk about that later, though. But on the hoppy side of things, then, um, this beer, there's a good little bit of earthiness in the back corners of the palate there. And as you come further forward along the sides of the palate, you get a little bit more of a big sort of floral, spicy, aromatic resin in there. To be honest with you, I wouldn't be overly surprised if they've used another hop in here as the bittering hop, for example, you know, Columbus or something like that, because it really has quite a spicy floral aromaticity. And out of the three hops that are in here, I don't remember Citra being that spicy, I don't remember Mosaic being it either, but Galaxy, of course, the the the, uh, the Australian hop that's in here, um, that can sometimes have quite a big sort of um, it's not quite resinous, but it can have a big massive floral character to it, which is quite interesting. So it might be just the, the galaxy that's given it that, but I think there might be a, a bittering hop in here and then the other hops have been added as, uh, as dry hops, to be honest with you. I think that's maybe a fair statement to make about this beer. But round the front curve of the palate then, you've got a nice... Um, 
lighter grassy quality to it as well which is interesting but the big part of this beer really where a lot of the complexity is is in that little oily bubble you get behind the front curve of your palate and that's where you get the juicy sort of fruity esters out of the beer so yeah um, if you go to the back of that oily bubble then um, that's where you get the nice kind of big passion fruity notes that's the galaxy that's giving you that as you move further forward you start to get a little bit it starts to mellow out a little bit you'll get the more juicy kind of mangoey notes to the beer and that's the citra starting to play its role but in fairness one of the things you also have to remember about citra is that depending on what you mix it with it can give you a little bit of a grapefruit and I do think there is a little bit of that very dark grapefruit quality to this one at the back of the um, the oily bubble. The other option with this beer that could be a, a it could be me sort of um, looking outside the box if you like. There might be a little bit of chinook in here because the 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 um, bitterness that this beer has is almost a little bit resinous to be honest with you. And that grapefruity note that the beer has could be coming from chinook being used as the as the bittering hop to be honest with you. Um, so I do. I reckon there might be a bit of Chinook or a bit of Columbus in here as the bittering hop, um, but then again, Citra, depending on what you mix it with, it will give you that grapefruity impression as well. So bear that in mind. But yeah, it mellows out a little bit. You start to get more of a, um, you know, you really start to get a little bit more of a nice um, mangoey kind of quality in there. Then moving further forward, it's a bit. Um, more tangerine and orangey to be honest with you and that's the mosaic starting to come out but on the very kind of front tip of your tongue that's where you get <coughs> pardon me a lot of the complexity out of this beer and all three hops in this one are going to give you a little bit of that so the further you go into the aftertaste you can pick out there is a little bit of a like a lychee kind of gooseberry thing there in the very kind of front tip of your tongue, right in the centre, there's a little bit of a kind of blueberry note but I also want to say that there's a little bit of like an apricotty um, kind of pineapple note to the beer as well and that's most likely to come from um, the, the pineapple notes will come from the from both the galaxy and the mosaic in this one so they do become a little bit more prominent the further you go into the aftertaste as well I'm finding this beer really has given me a little bit of, uh, of gas actually um, with all the you know, I mean you saw how the head was coming out it has given me a little bit of that gas from the carbonation but in terms of its flavour profile, this one is really nice. I think this one might have just been agitated on transport or something like that. Either that or it's been, it's maybe just a little bit fresh like I was saying. But in terms of its flavour profile, this one is really nice. It has a lot of um, similarities to some of the Gothenburg IPAs from uh, Stieg Berriots and uh, OO Brewing and Spike and stuff like that that you'll find. But as a standalone beer, it is really quite nice. It's quite cool, as I say, as well, to see Omnipoyo going back to do some more kind of purist brewing, if you like. And this beer, um, as I expected, stands up quite nicely. So, yeah. Um, in terms of the, the mouthfeel, then, I would say that this beer... Um, it's pretty mid-bodied, carbonation's quite smooth, but you could see it was giving me a little bit of gas and you could see how it was behaving from the head. Um, the Overall, I would say the mouthfeel on this one, it is fairly, it is quite smooth, it's quite crisp as well. Um, it's not the thickest of New England IPAs that you're going to come across. I think that's a fair assessment of this one. Uh, the malt base has a really good smoothness to it. It does have a little bit of a sweetness, a almost milkshakey sweetness like I was talking about. And a little bit of a biscuity quality as well. Good little bit of hoppiness to the beer too. I think you might be approaching, I think there's at least 40 in here. Maybe you're approaching 50 IBUs with this. And you've got a nice kind of juicy, fruity quality to it as well. So overall, it is a really nice um, New England IPA. If you like your New England IPAs to be a little bit sweeter in the malt base, but also to have a good little bit of a bitter um, hoppy blast to them, then I think this is one that you are really going to quite enjoy actually. So yeah, if that sounds like it ticks the boxes for you, I'm sure you will enjoy this one. But it's another really good example of Omnipoyo doing a little bit of more kind of purist brewing compared to some of their other beers. So um, yeah, have a go at this one for yourself and just see what you think. But I mean, if I had to 
you know, if, I, if you like, for example, um, Fata Morgana, you will enjoy this one, but it's just not quite as sweet and thick and creamy as you're going to get from Fata Morgana. So bear that in mind. But another very good, more purest beer from Omnipoyo. I think that's a good way to sum this one up. So we'll leave it at that for this. This one is the Tetragamatron, a New England IPA at 7.3% from Omnipoyo in Stockholm here in Sweden. A really nice example of a more kind of Gothenburg style um, New England IPA. So um, yeah, check it out for yourself and see how you get on but I've enjoyed this one and I'm going to enjoy drinking the rest of this beer but maybe later age um, for about a week or so after you buy it if it is very fresh actually because it's it does have a lot of that kind of green quality to it as well but yeah once again thank you for watching my beer reviews as always please let me know your, your, your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are from Omnipoil and uh, I'm sure we'll return to these guys at some point in the near future make sure you check out my social media have a go at some of the other Omnipoil beers if you haven't had the chance these guys are probably one of the best known Swedish breweries these days but thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon the Tetra Gang Amatron, a New England IPA at 7.3% with Citra, Galaxy and Mosaic from Omnipoyo in Stockholm here in Sweden. Until the next time, Slanja just now and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, Skull, cheers.